In this video, I'll be giving you a complete overview of Adobe Illustrator's interface and menu system so you can get started creating and working with your own documents. I know Illustrator is a pretty complex tool with lots of features and menu systems, and because of that, it can be a bit confusing at times if you're new to the software. So the point of this video is to get you familiar with the entire interface so it's a little less intimidating. So jumping right in, when you launch the software for the first time, you'll be taken to this home screen where you can create a new document based on one of these pre-made templates, or you can open a recently used document that you were working with. What we're gonna pay attention to is up here in the top left corner where you can create a new document or open an existing document. So if you have an existing document that you'd like to work with, just click the open button and locate it on your hard drive. Otherwise, we're gonna click new file to create a new document. Within the new document menu, you'll notice there's a lot of pre-made templates that you can choose from. If you use this tabbing system at the top of the menu, you can see the different types of templates they have. So if you're designing something for film and video and you want it to be 1280 by 720 pixels, you can just launch directly from that template. What I'm gonna pay attention to in this tutorial though is over here where you can set up your own document based on your own specifications. So for my demonstration, I'm gonna create a new document and I'm gonna size it at 1920 by 1080 pixels. And if you wanna change the units of measurement, you can do so over here in this dropdown. So if you prefer to work with inches or millimeters, you could change that setting there. And then down here, you can add a bleed if you'd like. Uh, as far as the color mode and the PPI goes, this isn't really something you need to concern yourself about unless you're designing something for print and your print shop has specified a certain color mode and PPI to work with. But if you're just designing something for screens, then you can just leave all of these defaults as they are and click the create button to open a new document. So now that you have a new document open, let's do an overview of the user interface so that you know what you're looking at. At the top of the screen here, you'll have your menu systems. Most of the tools and features in Adobe Illustrator can be found in one of these menus, but if you look just beneath that, there should be a control bar here. Now, depending on your installation, sometimes it launches with a control bar by default and sometimes it launches without it. Now, if your setup is like mine and you don't have a control bar up here, just come up here to the window menu and select control. And once you select that, you'll notice we have this toolbar in here with all of these different settings that give you handy shortcuts to things like fill and stroke, opacity. Uh, there'll be alignment menus in here when you have objects selected. This is a really handy menu to have open, so I would recommend enabling that if it's not enabled already. And just beneath that, you'll see the tabbing system for the different documents you may have open. Now I have two documents open right now. I have this document, which I was working with earlier, and then I have this document over here, which is what I just created. Now, if you've just launched a single document, you'll probably just see a single tab here. Moving over here to the left-hand side of the screen, you'll see our tools menu. Now, by default, Illustrator launches with the basic tools menu, and that gives you fewer tools to work with. So what I would recommend doing is changing this to the advanced tool menu. So if you come back up here to the window menu, you can go to toolbars and you can choose advanced. And when you choose that, you now have more tools to work with in here. And the way this works is not all of the tools are visible in the menu here. In fact, many of them are layered within the tool. So if you hold a click over this tool here, you can see all of the tools underneath the pen tool. Uh, you can either hold a click or you can right click and it'll show you all of the different tools. So if you wanted to create a circle, for example, you'd come over here to the rectangle tool and hold a click over the menu. And you'll notice we have all of our different shapes that we can work with and you can choose your ellipse tool right there. Now, if you're having trouble finding one of these tools, you can come down here to this icon with three circles and click on that. And this little glossary will pop up that shows you all of the different tools in Illustrator. And you can hover your cursor over them and it'll show you where they are located within the menu. And once you're finished, you can close that menu. And another really handy thing about this tool menu is that you can pop it out of its dock if you want to. So if I grab the menu up at this label up here and pull it out, you'll notice it now becomes a floating menu that I can move anywhere on my screen. And this could be really handy if you're working on something and you need really quick access to these tools. It could be helpful to have them uh, close by. Now, if you wanna put the tool menu back in the dock, you could just grab the menu at this top location right here and move it over to the edge of the screen. And when you see the edge of the screen highlight blue, just release the click and it'll be placed back in there. Now let's have a look at some of the window menus that are located over here on the right-hand side of your screen. When you launch Illustrator for the first time, it should open with these collapsed menus. But if you click on this arrow icon right here, it'll expand these menus into dockable windows that you can cycle through with the tabbing system. And these are just some examples of some common menus that you will have open. For example, the color menu, the stroke menu, gradient, 
align, so on and so forth. You will probably have different menus located in here when you launch Illustrator for the first time, but if you want to locate any of these menus, they are all located under the window menu at the top of the screen, and you can see all of them are indexed here. So for example, let's say I wanted to open the layers menu that, to add to my dockable menus. I can select layers, and the layers menu is going to open as a floating menu, but if you want to place this in the dock with your other menus, you could just click and drag the tab label, and when you see it highlight blue, you can release the click, and now it's located in there. And if you want to remove one of those menus, all you have to do is pull it out, and then click the X in the top left corner, and now the menu's gone. And if at any point you want to collapse the menus again, you can just click on these arrows again, and now the menus are collapsed, and now you will have these flyout menus that you can access uh, a little more easily. So let me open the menus again. One more thing I wanted to point out about these menus is that by default, they don't always show you all of the properties. So for example, here in my color tab, if I click on this menu icon right here, I can go down to where it says show options. And if I click on that, you'll notice we have a lot more properties to work with now. I can change the HSB values and I can change the hex codes and so on and so forth. And this is the same for every other menu as well. For example, if I come over here to the stroke menu, under the basic menu, it just lets me change the stroke width. But if I click on the menu icon, right here and go to show options, now we have a bunch of other presets to work with. And these are all really important. So I would recommend whenever you open a new menu, just click on the menu icon up here and make sure you're showing all of the options so that you have access to all of the tools and features that you need. So now that we've done a layout overview, let's have a look at the document and how you can go about changing its properties if you'd like to do so. So the way this works is the white rectangle located in the center of the screen is the document, and the gray space outside of it is empty space. Now I can work in both areas. The only difference is that whatever is saved within that white space will represent the document that you export once you're finished. So let me get rid of this circle. Now if you want to change the size of your document at any time, you could just come over here to your Artboards tool, which is located in the toolbar. A shortcut for accessing that is by pressing Shift and O on the keyboard. So I'll click on that to select it. And when you do that, you'll have these scaling handles on your artboard that you can use to scale the document as needed. And if you use the corner handles, you can change both the width and the height at the same time. And if you want to change the size of your artboard based on a numerical value, all you have to do is come up here to your control menu and type in your width and your height. And make sure to have the aspect ratio locked or unlocked based on whether or not you want to scale both sides proportionately. Another thing you can do is when you have the artboard tool selected, you could just press enter and we'll get this menu here with these other presets that you can edit, such as the width and the height, the X and the Y axis, and so on and so forth. So that should do it for today's tutorial. That's how you can get started working with Adobe Illustrator to create and edit new documents. And hopefully the menu interface is a little more familiar now and it's not so confusing when you try to follow along with tutorials. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Illustrator Explainer series. It's a collection of over a hundred videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Adobe Illustrator, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.